danger. It's danger. Everybody come to the breakfast club. I call this the hot seat. <laughs> You're alive. You're alive. Can I live? You are out of control. I can't even deal with you. Y'all are so petty. Why are y'all so petty? The world's most dangerous morning show. DJ Envy. Captain of this bitch. Angela Yee. I stay in everybody's business, but in a good way. Charlemagne the God. The ruler rubbing you the wrong way. The Breakfast Club. Pay for everybody. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Good morning, Angela Yee. Peace to the planet. It's Monday. What's happening? Another Monday morning. Happy to be with y'all today. How are you, Angela Yee? Oh, man, I've been better. <laughs> I've been better. What's so wrong? Listen, well, over the past few days, I've been doing a lot. I went to Atlanta to do the social media room for the Black Music Honors. And did a lot of interviews there. And then after that, I was at my college, Wesleyan University. I got this Distinguished Alumni Award. And I did the keynote over the weekend during graduation. Okay, congratulations. Drop on the clues bombs for Angela Yee. Yesterday, I was in Baltimore at Black Swan. And guess what? I was feeling a little under the weather. I'm sure you could hear it in my voice. So I was like, let me just take this at-home COVID test. And for the first time, it's positive. So for the first time since uh, we heard of this COVID-19, it's finally caught up to you. Yes, finally. I am fortunately vaxxed and boosted, so I think it would could potentially be a lot worse. It feels like I have a cold. Like my throat hurts. Okay. I had a little bit of a cough, but um, and I'm tired. But I thought I was just tired because I was tired, you know? Well, so. it, it, things could be worse. Yeah, so I'll be okay, but I'm just now quarantined at home. What about you? I'm trying to think of the last time I saw, when the last time I saw you. Was that last Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, I went to Atlanta after that. I haven't been back. Oh, okay. In the, All right, in good. The studio since then. Yeah. So. Okay. <laughs> but right. I don't know exactly. I don't know. Nobody has told me that they tested positive. I don't know who's had it, so I don't know where I got it from. But I assume just timing wise, and because of the work that I was doing there and the amount of people I was talking to that. Probably was it. I'm sure it's okay. Drink some tea. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what the what the hell. Yeah, I don't even I don't even remember what to do when you get COVID now. I had it last year, December. I guess you just treat it like a cold, the flu. At this point, I don't know. Yeah, it probably depends on your symptoms. Right now, it's just like a little bit of a sore throat for me, and so I'm just drinking tea and a lot of emergency. All right, and there you have it. Well, all right. Well, this this this, this, uh, this morning show will be sick then. Okay, we'll put, we'll put on a sick show for the people. All right? What we got in front page news? Oh, man. Well, of course we're going to talk about the NBA scores. But this story was so tragic. This girl was 15 years old, went to the bathroom at a Dallas Mavericks game, and then just never came back. The family has found her. We'll tell you what happened. What? Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. It's Monday. All right. All right, let's get the show started. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Yes, yes, yes. I swear. I swear on Mondays you wake up feeling like you need oil, man. Like America really needs to add another day to the weekend. Lord have mercy. Uh, it's the world's most dangerous world to show the Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, our good brother DJ Envy is not here this morning. But it's time for front page news. Now the Golden State Warriors, my preseason pick to win the NBA Finals. Uh, they are one win away from the NBA Finals. They beat the Dallas Mavericks 109-100 last night in Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals in Dallas. Steph Curry scored 31 points to give Golden State a 3-0 series advantage. And tonight, the Heat and the Celtics will meet in Boston for Game 4. Miami leads that series 2-1. And this NBA Minute is brought to you by Hennessy, the spirit of the NBA. What you got, ye? Mm. Well, I was telling you guys, this story is so tragic. This is definitely uh, going to make you nervous. But a young 15-year-old girl at a Dallas Mavericks game went to the bathroom and did not return. She was gone for 10 days until authorities located her at an extended stay America hotel in Oklahoma City on April 18th. Now, when she went to the bathroom and did not return, her father immediately notified the security, the staff, and the police officers of her disappearance. Imagine you're with your family. You're like, I'm running to the bathroom, and you just don't come back. All right, by the time the game ended, she still had not been found and her father was instructed to return home. They never opened an investigation into the case, despite the parents acting multiple times, pleading with them to do that. 
The father said, my daughter was missing in Dallas. This is a Dallas case, but they refused to open a case for her. Is that ridiculous? Now, their reasoning is that, um, you know, when it comes to missing juveniles, unless there are circumstances which appear as involuntary, such as a kidnapping or abduction, they don't investigate them as runaways. And so the victim's parents did eventually seek a nonprofit that handles Texas trafficking cases. And that's what helped them locate their daughter. They were able to track down explicit images of her on a prostitute website out of Oklahoma City. And uh, they did arrest eight people in connection with this. And um, my heart is just breaking. Imagine so, for 10 days. Mm -hmm. So she got kidnapped from the game? Yes. She went to the bathroom and never came back. And the police that's didn't do anything. That's crazy. So uh, I'm just, uh, what's, uh, that's, how did that happen in a, 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 you said at the Mavericks game? Yep. With all of those people around? They that bold? I have, I have a no idea how that even happened. But of the eight people who were arrested in connection, one of them, um, Gibson was charged with offering to engage in prostitution. And then three of them, Nelson Hayes and Gonzalez, are charged with human trafficking and distribution of child pornography. One of them is being charged with rape. And Gibson and Alexander have felony warrants. And one of them has a robbery warrant as well. So that is And awful. that's why I'm, that is terrible. And that's why I'm a helicopter parent. That's why I have a severe parental paranoia right there. That story is not going to help. And, and I, I'm especially in a place like that where it's a large crowd. I don't trust nobody. I'm going to the bathroom with you. I'm standing by the bathroom door. That's exactly why I moved the way I moved as a parent right there. But Jesus think about how Christ. shocked we are, right? She's 15 years old. All she did was go to the bathroom at the game. That's the last place you think something could potentially happen. Okay, we'll be right here. Go to the bathroom. Come right back. And so <clears throat> the parents also just, I can't even believe that nobody would help. Like my daughter just never came back from the bathroom. She's 15 years old. The game is over. We still haven't found her and they won't investigate the case. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, yo, an arena full of tens of thousands of people. Like I'm surprised she didn't go kicking and screaming and raising hell. You know, to alert somebody. Well, fortunately, she was found. But unfortunately, it's 10 days later. And we can't even imagine the horrors that this young girl went through. So no, that no is man. Uh, your front page news. Jesus Christ. Sorry to, I know, right, I'm get, sorry. But that story was just horrifying to me over the weekend. Well, that's, that's why a lot of us suffer from parental paranoia right now. Parental paranoia is what I call uh, that anxiety that comes with, with, with just being a parent. You know, because at, at the end of the day, we all doing the best we can to protect our, our kids. But Lord have mercy. You can't even go to a game and she can't even go to the bathroom at 15 years old. My God. All right. Get it off your chest. 1-800-585-1051. Uh, call us. Tell us why you're blessed. Tell us why you're mad. Whatever you want to vent about, we're here. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Hey. Good get it morning. off your chest, ma'am. You blessed, black, and highly favored. I'm calling from Jacksonville, Florida. I just want to give a shout out to the troops. We are getting ready to deploy at my unit, and I'm just wishing us a safe return there and back. Where oh my going? gosh, I'll be praying for that. I am in the U.S. Navy. I've been in the Navy for 10 years. We're about to deploy on a ship and just provide protection for Ukraine, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. Man. Well, oh, we definitely well, sending you positive you energy, on. love, and light, queen. And thank you for your one, service. Guys. That's an important thing. That, that's important work that you do. Thank you guys for your support. Can I shout out my mom real quick? Of course. I want to say good morning to my beautiful black queen, Kaya, and shout out to my son, Makari. I hope you have a great day at school, baby. I love you guys and have a good one. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Get it off your chest. Who's this? Uh, it's Clint. Clint from Alabama. Clint? Yeah, Clint. Clint from Alabama. What's happening, King? How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. How y'all doing, Breakfast Club? Bless black Thank and highly you. favored, sir. Uh, what I want to get off my chest is the poem that I wrote. About oh, Lord. Lord. What? Hey, who, asked for nice. that who asked for that Let's this morning, sir? Now, now, before uh, you get into it, what what made you write this poem? Uh, it's a poem called Straight Bullets, and it's everyday life. Uh, seeing people, uh, 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 seeing my people getting killed, not just by straight bullets, but by bullets. Uh, uh, just 
killing each other left and right. Okay. okay. Let's hear the stray bullets, poem. All right. Um, this I write with a heavy heart and burdened soul. The truth is, far too many of the next generation won't even live long enough to grow old. Stray bullets sending them to prison or rendering their bodies cold. You see, killing each other has become something like a sport or a game. Soon there will be none left in which to carry the torch or pass down our last names. Now those who want to see you fail are thanking you for a job well done. No more peaceful talks because you're so quick to pull your gun. Now a life is lost and you find yourself an irrelevant number in the system. Or you tell me who won. Realizing too late, you just reduce yourself to being just another pun. I remember home used to be oh, our God. safe haven. But every other day, stray bullets are killing innocent neighbors. And some of them were just babies. Now, we can blame society for this awful or unlawful bind. But God gave us all common sense. So I guess we can only point to ourselves for the decisions we make. Because instead of positively utilizing your mind, you made a conscious decision to brandish your gun. And in a blink of an eye, your stray bullet took the life of someone's brother, sister, daughter, or son. Stray bullets. When will it end? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. I mean, that was a beautiful story. I mean, there was no luck. I mean, there was no lie in anything you said. You were telling the absolute truth, but we just woke up. It's Monday. Come on. I don't want to hear that right now. Jesus. Yeah, I, hey, it's, it's, a, it's a serious topic, man. It's, you know, hey, yeah, hey a, who old enough to remember at the height of the uh, Stop the Violence movement when uh, uh, the West Coast rappers got together and the East Coast rappers made Self-destruction. We all in the same gang. And then uh, right. uh, the East Coast rappers made self-destruction. Right. I, I was born in nineteen. I was born in the nineteen hundreds, sir. I'm forty three. I got you. I got you. I mean, I, I, I know. I, you know. I wasn't. I was, I was just throwing it out there. The question that why yes, is sir. it that we're dealing with okay. the same the same issues, but the messaging is gone. I mean, it's a lot of socio socio economic conditions that uh, you know led us to this. But we'll, we, that's that's something for another day. Thank you for the poem, though, sir. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing your art with us. Like how you rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Get it off your chest. 1 800 585 1051. Call us right now. It's the world's most dangerous one to show the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. your time to get it off your chest whether you're mad or blessed so you better have the same energy we want to hear from you on the breakfast club hey this is gary how you doing Tyler, man? what's up with you gary what's up king chilling up? chilling chilling good morning angela Yee. sorry you got covid boo oh thank you i appreciate it i'll be okay hopefully i, I know i know i know they say everybody in the world gonna get it at some point mm -hmm. but yeah i just wanted to call and say good morning um that lady, I mean, that young lady that got kidnapped from the game, that is horrible. I have four daughters, and I can't Man. even imagine something like that happening to them. Like, it's horrible. Right. And the hopelessness That's of why nobody I trying to help you. That's terrible. Right. Like Charlamagne said, I can't believe she didn't go out kicking and screaming. Like, at a game where all of these people are, you can scream, yell, kick, holler. Somebody going to at least look in your direction and try to help you. We don't know how they got her out of the game. That's what I want to uh, find out. One, uh, I was at my graduation, and one of my friends who graduated with me, she was talking about her daughter, and she was like, you know, I could see if somebody was like, hey, I got some sneakers, you know, in the car if you want to. Like, you don't know what happened or what right. type of thing to lure somebody out. So I don't know that part of the story yet. Right. But my podcast still popping. Y'all uh, convicted conversations. I got 11 books out in Nine Scarlet Maine. Make sure y'all caught Patches. Patches is about sex trafficking. Um, I just dropped one yesterday called White Lies about the deputy that broke the guy out of jail. It's not, oh, wow. you know, yeah, so I might have put in that work, Charlotte Maine. So you be cranking them books out? Yeah, I got 11 right now. I mean, man, it don't take me long to do it. At first, I used to think it'd take a long time, but it don't take me long to do it at all, bro. Absolutely. Well, salute to you, Gary. Thank you, Charlamagne. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you. Appreciate what y'all do for the culture. I have your books. Love you, bro. Love you too, King. Get it off your chest. Who's this? 
This K, what's going on, Charlemagne? Peace, K. What's happening, my brother? Yeah, I want to say uh, good morning to Angela Lee. Good morning, good morning. to DJ Envy. Charlemagne, yo, 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 yo. And I want we to out uh, here. I just want to ask you a question about how you feel about this body, this Bobby Smurder thing about since he got out of incarceration. He going off on this twerking and everything. Everything on YouTube is like he, he's just twerking. Like how, how do I feel about it? Yeah. I feel that Bobby Smurda did eight years in prison, and I feel like he's happy to be home. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't understand why a man dancing uh, bothers y'all so much. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask that question. And another yeah, thing salute I to Bobby Smurda. Another thing I wanted to ask is I love when Gia posted and put out, I don't know if she really did it, but I seen it on a social media that you and DJ Envy she get she get off on that when y'all start flirting with each other on the radio. I, Where is this going? So we I think that was a, a that was a joke taken out of context. Okay. Sir. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure Gia was joking. I, I, I was bugging off that I'm I like know. I told I told my best friend I'm like yo I gotta call the Breakfast Club in the morning because I, I I listen to this every morning for the past like eight years. <laughs> I make sure I wake up to listen to you just say yo 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 and then well, thank you Kay. I, 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 I like, appreciate that that's my boy I'm confused so you don't like Bobby Schmurter twerking but you love that uh Gia likes Charlemagne and Envy in a relationship yeah I, I laugh off that I'll be bugging I go crazy I'll just be laughing I, off that I will say ever since Gia said that Envy has turned up his flirting a lot. I don't think y'all know. I don't know if y'all noticed or not. But ever since Gia said that, he's turned up his flirting with me a lot. Yes, yeah, Charlemagne. And then I don't know. Like I seen other posts. It's like, like I'm not saying you're like that. I'm not. I'm not going against that community. <laughs> oh my gosh. But in the background, of all your posts. It got. It oh got like, man. It got like Barbie dolls with hitting. Gay is like gay stuff. I don't know what you're talking well, about, sir. Say, Have a nice feels day. Like you, feels like you went in on this. <laughs> oh, right. man. Get it off your chest. We do that every morning. Anytime you want to vent, if you want to just call up and tell us why you're blessed, if you want to call up and tell us why you're upset, if you just want to express some things like Kay just expressed, you can do that, too. Now, we got a uh, rumor report coming up here. Yes. The book about Isaac Lee. He is the man who attacked Dave Chappelle while Dave Chappelle was on stage, and he's done an exclusive interview from jail. But this will tell you what he had to say. All right, all that and more when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. Ah, we need a warm up day uh, before we get back to the actual work week. We need a day between Sunday and Monday before we uh actually get back to it. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. It's time for the rumor report. Let's talk Dave Chappelle. It's time, time, time. She's spilling the tea. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Isaiah Lee is a man who was accused of attacking Dave Chappelle. And in an exclusive interview with The Post from jail, he talks about why he did it. He said that Dave should be more sensitive when it comes to the jokes he cracks. He said, I identify as bisexual, and I wanted him to know what he said was triggering. I wanted him to know that next time he should consider first running his material by people could it could affect. He said he expected to have a good time at the show, but he grew angry and frustrated as Dave joked about his prior controversies with the LGBTQ community as well as homelessness. He said, I'm also a single dad and my son is five. It's a struggle and I wanted Dave Chappelle to know it's not a joke. He said his breaking point came when another comedian in the show's lineup made a crude joke about pedophilia, which he said dredged up memories of his own molestation as a teen. Mm. So I can understand. I can understand being triggered by that, but serious question. Uh, by the way, all my questions are serious, but that, but, but could that be considered a hate crime? What do you mean? 
He attacked Dave Chappelle because he hated Dave Chappelle's jokes. He attacked Dave Chappelle because he hated that Dave is making jokes about a community he's a part of. What he did was driven by hate. He can't say he was defending himself or his community because Dave didn't physically attack him. And if he went to that show armed with a knife gun and he was triggered by, you know, jokes he heard uh, from Dave or otherwise, shouldn't that be considered a premeditated hate crime? You can't physically attack me for who I am. Oh, right? Because you don't want me to physically attack you for who you are. That would be considered a hate crime if I physically attacked you for who you are. So if you physically attack me because you hate who I am, should that be considered a hate crime? Uh, I don't know if that would be the definition of a hate crime. But, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. We'll have to ask an attorney. But I think that it would have been different. Mm -hmm. Maybe if he hated Dave because Dave was gay, that would be a hate crime. Well, why, you know why, why, why does it have to be sexual? Why does it have to be sexuality or race, though? Like you just you literally hate me just because of something that I said. You you don't you don't like something uh, that 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 I that I spoke. So you decided to physically attack me. Sounds like it's driven by hate to me. But I will say, if you feel that way, you can't go to any comedian show ever because there's always you can't do that to anybody. There's always different, you know, a comedy show would be triggering for you then because any topic mm. that people joke about and there's things that people went through, too, that they might joke about it themselves. To, mm -hmm. You know, but all right. Now, Mike Tyson, on his latest episode of Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson, he addressed the altercation that he had with the passenger on that JetBlue flight back in April. He was talking to Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson, and he talked about how uh, he was triggered. I mean, Mike just came from a nightmare on the plane. Like, yes, and they say they ain't going to pick up charges. Yeah, so you good. Yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You survived. Yeah. So yeah. me, man. You kept your poise for a long time. Yeah, I took pictures with the And I'm just saying, this guy don't know I love... Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't even be taking public planes. My wife gets mad that I take public planes. Well, what am I going to do on the f***ing plane with my, my friends <laughs> and the f***ing... Uh, what, I guess... A, what, are he's supposed to watch me, a bodyguard and a f***ing... Yes, and what am I going to do on the plane? It triggers me. So he I, I see nothing wrong with what Mike Tyson did. Yeah, he took pictures with the guy and everything, and the guy was harassing him. So that's what ended up it, happening. He was defending himself. That man was violating Mike Tyson's space. I see nothing wrong with what Mike Tyson did, and I'm glad that the charges were dropped. Uh, that is the right call. All right, now Flavor Flav, apparently he has uh, an eighth child now, a three-year-old son named Jordan, with his former manager, Kate Gamel. And according to TMZ, they said that he's paying $3,000 a month in child support and trying to build a relationship with the young boy. He sees him at least once a week. Now, he does still owe over $78,000 in uh, back child support, but that's the one thing that he has to do. And now his, the mom is saying he's only seen uh, Jordan's time since he was born in 2019 and that that favorable report by TMZ is, I guess, not true. So she said Jordan has trouble detoxing. He has to have specialized medical care and medicines. Flavor is supposed to pay half of that, but has failed to do so. And if he really wants Jordan in his life, why would he block me? It clearly shows he doesn't care about Jordan since he did it right after I put the drum video up on my Instagram. So he, she said now Jordan can't see pictures of his dad or he's afraid I will see all of his gigs, which produce income. And then he has to pay higher child support. He did agree to a paternity test back in 2019 after previously denying that that was his child. But the results prove that he is 100 percent the father. All right. Mm. And Rod Wave's domestic violence case has been dismissed. According to paperwork, they said the arrest was connected to him choking his ex-girlfriend while their children were present. But now the case has been dismissed. Right away, his attorney, Bradford Cohen, took to Instagram to announce that that case is over. He said, myself and my main man uh, represented Rodarius Green, a.k.a. Rod Wave, on his arrest last week. And we are thrilled that this misunderstanding is behind him and he can move forward with a successful career. Sometimes misunderstandings can be misconstrued and it isn't until all the evidence and witnesses are reviewed that the right decision is made by the state's attorney. So that's, you know, Rod Wave, case dismissed. And Kerry Washington is talking about her scandal co-stars and how they were upset at her for years over some comments that she made about kissing. Now, she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show ahead of the final episode, which, by the way, is happening May 26th later on this week. And here's what she had to say. 
I got in a lot of trouble here because you asked me who I liked to kiss better on the show between the two male leads. And I said, I thought I was keeping the peace by saying, I don't like kissing either one of them. Uh -huh. But they were both pretty pissed for uh -huh. years. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you say that on national television? Right, right. Well, yeah, because you could have gone the other way and say, I like kissing both of them equally. But, but instead who you says say that. Yeah. No. <laughs> Nobody telling the truth. Exactly. No. There's clearly one better kisser. <laughs> Who is it now that the show's over? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. What's the problem here? Nothing. How they gonna be mad because she don't want to kiss? You know what I mean? She don't like kissing either one of y'all. She might not be attracted to either one of y'all. Have y'all smelled y'all breaths? Huh? <laughs> maybe, yep. maybe both of y'all trash said, kisses. Envy said Guy is a better kisser than you. That's, that was, he, I don't see what he can. I don't see what he has me to compare it to. He ain't never kissed me. <laughs> All right. Well, that is your rumor reports. Yes. When we Coming come back, next. we got front page news. We're going to talk. Yes, uh, what are we talking about? You? We're talking about Joe Biden. He said the U.S. would intervene militarily if China invades Taiwan. Oh Lord! <laughs> it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is not here today, and it's time for front page news. First of all, salute to the Golden State Warriors. They're one win away from the NBA Finals. That was my NBA preseason pick to win it all, the Golden State Warriors. They took down the Mavericks 109-100 to in Game 3 of the Western Conference Finals in Dallas. Steph Curry scored 31 points to give Golden State a 3-0 series advantage. And tonight... The Heat and Celtics will meet in Boston for game four. Miami leads that series 2-1. I think, uh, you know, the winner of that series, this is going to come down to what team can stay healthy. Is Jimmy Butler playing tonight? I don't know if Jimmy Butler's playing tonight because uh, he got hurt last game. But this NBA Minute is brought to you by Hennessy, the spirit of the NBA. What you got in front page news, Angelique? All right, well, Joe Biden is in Asia, and he was in South Korea over the weekend. And he was talking about a lot of different things, including the monkeypox cases. He says they are something to be concerned about, but not on the level of COVID. Um, and then he was there before he was taken off and going to Japan. Here's what Joe Biden had to say while on this tour. Well, I, I just don't think it rises to the level of the kind of concern that existed with COVID-19 or and uh, the smallpox vaccine works for it. So, uh, but I think people should be careful. Yeah, right, I remember it. Uh, I, I don't rem mm -hmm. I, I remember people saying about that COVID. about COVID when COVID first started. Exactly. Yeah. I mm -hmm. guess because they got the, uh, they already got a vaccine in place though. All right, now Joe Biden also said he could meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un under certain conditions if he was sincere and whether it was serious. Um, here's what else he had to say. And, you know, the United States and South Korea are considering expanding military exercises in and around the Korean Peninsula. That's in response to North Korea's progressing missile and nuclear program. Here is what Joe Biden had to say um, about troops in Korea. To all the American troops that are here and your families, Thank you for what you do to defend our country and our ally. And to the Korean forces, thank you as well for your service, and for having our backs, just as we have yours. All right, here's what else Joe Biden had to say about working with Korea. I won't attempt the Korean, but we, uh, we're, we go together. We are prepared for anything North Korea does. We go together. We've had we thought through how we respond to whatever they do, and so I'm not concerned if that's what you're suggesting. He said we go together. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Now, he also did say that the U.S. <laughs> I know what it means in high school. <laughs> <laughs> militarily, if China were to invade Taiwan, he says the burden to protect Taiwan is even stronger after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And in that news conference, this is when he was in Tokyo, he said yes when asked if he was willing to get involved. Um, he said that's the commitment that we made. Now, the U.S. traditionally avoids making such an explicit security guarantee to Taiwan, which it no longer has a mutual defense treaty with, instead maintaining a policy of strategic ambiguity about how far they would be willing to go. But uh, Biden's comments drew a sharp response from the mainland, which claimed Taiwan to be a rogue province. And so a White House official did say that Joe Biden's comments did not reflect a policy shift. And uh, there you have it. I don't. He's in Asia. I'm so confused. So so you don't you, you don't want to help 
Ukraine militarily because you don't want to start World War Three, but you will announce that you're willing to help Taiwan militarily against the country with the world's largest military, China. Like, well, I, what's the difference? I'm confused. Like, why? I, I'm confused. All right. Well, that is your front page news. All right. What are, what are we talking about this morning, Angela? You, you was throwing something around. You kept talking about somebody being a bad tipper. <laughs> well, I was just talking about the um, rules when it comes to tipping. Now, I saw this article where they were talking about celebrities and how they tip. A lot of um, people who work in restaurants were discussing who was a bad tipper, who was a good tipper, who was rude, who was demanding, who was nasty. One person they said was really nice was Keanu Reeves. We always hear this about Keanu Reeves. They said he spent plenty of time taking photos with people. He always tipped about 30 to 50 percent on very expensive tabs. Now, I will say for myself, even when you know, somebody who is uh, working at a restaurant is rude to me, I still leave a tip. It just might not be as much as I would leave if they were um, amazing. What about yourself? Well, you know, that this, this is a good conversation. I think waiters and waitresses should always just remember that regardless of who you're serving, celebrity or otherwise, your job is to provide fantastic customer service. That's mm-hmm. what ultimately gets you a great tip. Like what you just said, Yee, is, you know, if somebody's rude or you didn't like their service, you still leave them something, but you don't leave them what you possibly could have left them. So to me, it doesn't matter who you are serving. Just do a great job and you'll get tipped uh, accordingly. That's what I look have you at. Ever I look for great a, service. Have you, ever, have you ever not left a tip because somebody was so rude? We'll talk about it when we come nah, back and you guys I, can call us up. Yeah. Yes, eight. 800-585-1051. Let us know what your rules are on tipping. Some people feel like if you're rude, you don't get a tip at all. So let's see what you think. It's The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Breakfast Club. Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today, and we're talking tips. Pause. Talk to him, Yee. Yeah, so we're talking about how do you tip when you go to a restaurant. There was an article where they were talking about some of the worst tippers who are celebrities. They said Tiger Woods is number one on that list. He's notoriously a bad tipper. They said he was playing a blackjack hand, a $10,000, and didn't even leave $5 tip. Um, they said Jeremy Piven, you know him from Entourage. He was actually asked never to return to a restaurant after eating at a sushi restaurant in Aspen, Colorado. Ink them in it by giving them a DVD copy of season one and didn't give any cash at all. NFL player, they said he had to defend his bad tip. He actually left a 20 cent tip on a $61 bill. And his explanation, he said this this was so bad, uh, he wanted to disrespect them. And you can't do that and expect me to tip you. He said, I don't care who Dipson is. Now, why is he, why, why are they considered bad tippers? Because they are celebrities and folks assume they got money. So you already have an expectation when you see them walk in, like you see Tiger Woods. So you just expect Tiger Woods going to leave a thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. But then when he leaves nothing, you're upset. Cause I'm sure plenty of people well, leave nothing every day that aren't celebrities. And I'm sure they get upset about that. I mean, 20 cent tip on a $61 bill is definitely a bad tipper. (laughs) No tip at all and a copy of your DVD is definitely a bad tip. And, uh, you know, $5 on a $10,000 hand of blackjack is not a good tip either. Now, Now, I will say season one of Entourage is absolute fire. Okay, so I think that they would have enjoyed that. But uh, like I said before, I just think waiters and waitresses should always just remember that regardless of who you're serving, celebrity or otherwise, your job is to provide fantastic customer service. That's what ultimately gets you a great tip. Shouldn't matter who you are serving. Just do a great job and you'll get tipped accordingly. And and the reason... Sometimes, but sometimes do you ever they as a do waiter? a great job. Uh, no, I haven't. But sometimes people do do a great job and don't get tips at all. You know that? So, you know, some people just don't yeah. believe in that. I went on a, I went to lunch one time with somebody I was working with. He was like, oh, let me treat you to lunch. And he didn't leave a tip at all. And then I went back the next day because it was a place that we all ate at all the time. 
And she actually asked me, like, was something wrong with the service yesterday? Why did, and I felt really bad about it. I was like, I'm sorry. I didn't pay for it. Yeah, I leave tips just because I know that, you know, um, the tips are expected. And I know that's why the waiter or waitress is, you know, busting their ass at our table. I get, and then you can watch them. You can watch them around the restaurant, you know, doing their job. They're trying to serve you. They're trying to serve other people. So I believe in, 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 in tipping. You know, but the only reason I don't like stuff like this is because what about the people who leave you terrible tips every day? Like the regular everyday person who doesn't have fame, whatever that is, who has money and doesn't leave you a tip just because, you know, they're cheap. And and, and, and vice versa, the regular everyday person who has money, who leaves great tips, those folks don't get talked about at all. And those are who I'm sure the waiters and waitresses encounter more. So, you know, how about big them up? Or what talk about down to them? When there's a tip that's included, but the service wasn't good. Mm, yeah, I don't like that. I, 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 yeah, I don't like that. I don't like when they already have it. When they already have it uh, written into the thing, when it's like, oh, fifteen percent goes to gratuity or whatever. I don't like that. I don't like that. Because right, what well, if I didn't like your you service? Let's go to, right. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Good hey. morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Keisha from. Hey, this is Keisha from the D. Keisha, what up? Though? What's what up, do you Keisha think from the D? Thing? What hey, are nothing much. Well, you know, I always do my, you know, 15, 20% rule when um, it comes to waiters or waitresses. But I used to be a waitress. And so whether they are, whether they give me bad service or good service, I always tip. But you might have missed out on like, you know, 20 or $30 if you are rude. So you might get two or three. But I always give them something because I know that they don't make that much money per hour. Mm -hmm. True. Now, true. have you ever had an off, everybody has an off day, right? So what happens mm -hmm. then when we're having a bad day? You said when they're having a bad day or when when I'm having no, a bad day? No, when you're, yeah, like when you, were, when you were a waitress and you were having a bad day. Did you ever have a day um, where you just maybe? You know, and I hate to say that, I mean, of course I had bad days, but I've always been able to like, you know, realize that that was the link to my money. So I, even if I um had like a bad table, you know, before, I always like restarted my day with every table or restarted, you know, by every table. Because if you let one person, you know, mess up your, your day, you know, you're going to make... $20 all day, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really feed into rude people. You know, if I have a bad day, if personally I'm having a bad day, when I come into work, I'm going to work. <laughs> so I got to be, you know, bubbly. I got to, you know, be attentive. You know what I'm saying? So you got to, you know, compartmentalize and realize what you're there for and what you're doing and separate all the other stuff unless you're going to mess up your pocket. True. All right. I Thank respect that. that. All right. You guys have a good day. You too. You too. Oh, that's right. We're talking tips and not the kind Envy likes, okay? We're talking uh, actual cash tips when you're out and about, you know, dealing with waiters and waitresses. Call us right now, 1-800-585-1051. What's the question, you? What's your rules are when it comes to tipping in a restaurant? What are your rules when it comes to tipping in a restaurant, okay? It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Talk about it. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today, and we are talking tipping. Okay, what is your etiquette for tipping? You want to go right to the phone, G? Yeah, and I was going to say, normally I give 20% on a tip, but if somebody is really amazing, I leave, um, you know, even more than that, just depending on what the situation is. But if someone is not that great, I still always make sure that I leave a tip. I never know what somebody is going through. It would have to be really, really bad for me to just, you know, and, and I will complain if it's awful, just so you know. All right. But yes, that's yeah, I've never, I've never not. Yeah, I've never not left a tip. I, it's just all based on service to me. I agree. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are y'all? Good morning. What's happening? Good morning. What's your name, brother? Sean from Jersey. Okay, Sean. Tell us about uh, your tip. What's your etiquette on tipping, sir? Well, the, well, the tip is, you know, when, you, when you're when you a waitress, you shouldn't really expect it to a degree because that's what you signed up for. So when you, you know, you work and it's a job and, you know, you get paid minimum wage, but the tip, you know, you signed up for that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Well, I think, but what they pay you is based off of the expectation that you make a lot of money off of tips. So that is uh -huh. part of what the expectation is. Yeah, but you, you signed up for it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily mandatory. So if I have $100, right, and, you know, the bill come up to 98 you know what I'm saying? So I should order less food because I should be tipping you? 
So you would leave a two dollar tip on a ninety eight dollar bill? So if I have a hundred dollars, I want to take you out, right, Angela? I only had a hundred dollars, right? So I take you out to hundred dollars. The bill come to ninety eight. I only have a hundred dollars. So I should order less food for me and you. <laughs> you, use your card. you got a point. No, I'm, I'm I'm being real though. I'm being like dead at like you know what I'm saying? Like if I have a hundred dollars, I want to take you out. That's all that I had, right? We go out, we sit down, we have a good time. The bill come to ninety eight dollars. So now you saying I should take you out with a hundred but order less food so I can give a tip? Oh, you should tell me I only I have hundred dollars on me. Do you have twenty dollars to leave for a tip? I can't tell you that because then you're going to say to yourself, why am I with this poor-ass boy? Exactly. Exactly. I'm not going to ask you to leave a tip. I'll just say, like I just said, I would be embarrassed if I'm with somebody and they didn't leave a tip. I would feel bad. I get what he's saying, though. Now, what if if the service was amazing? You're going to leave $2? But you got to understand this is the so they all That's all I got. Up for this type of job. They signed up for this. So you got to take the job knowing that you may not get a tip because this is the job that you signed I, I, up for. So you got to accept everything I, that comes with it. I will say this to you, King, though. A lot of these places that you go, they already have gratuity added in. So maybe you should, if you know you're walking in the restaurant with $100, everything got to be premeditated. So you got to say to yourself, if they already have such and such gratuity added in, then maybe you shouldn't order as much as you probably would and let her eat. And then you have enough for the tip. And now you still look like a boss. You know what, Charlemagne? You my man. I agree. I agree. Because there, you go, there is That's nothing boss about leaving two dollars. <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed. All right. Uh, yeah. Thank you for calling, brother. Always, Sheesh. my brother. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. Good morning, Breakfast Club. This is Damani from Brooklyn. What's up, Damani? What up, Damani? What's happening? How y'all doing this morning? Word to my dead. Word to my dead. I'm feeling sexy, my guy. And you oh, know, man, because look, you're from look. Brooklyn, I know you tip. Come on. Oh, listen, listen. I definitely got to do that. Um, I believe. You know, people, you know, they, they got a job to do. So, you know, your service, to me, depicts your tip. So if, you're, if your service sucks, your tip won't suck. You oh know? My gosh. So Simple think, as that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> nah, you... Simple as that. You you working for yourself. If I'm a contractor and I got a contracting job, I work for myself. My my performance dictates my payment. So I believe that's the same thing as for, for a waitress or a waiter. Have you ever not, have you ever right. not left a tip? Oh nah nah I've I've always I've always up a tip you know if it's, if I don't like it I'm gonna leave you something like five dollars. All right. But I'm also you also something. too though also too Charlemagne said something earlier about he didn't understand what uh Joe Biden meant when we go when he said we go together. I'm prior I'm prior service I did 17 years in the military we did two wars. When you in Korea they say we go together in the Korean language they say gachi gachi da that means we go together. But Joe Biden's so old he just Went out there oh, not, not knowing what he was got saying. you, so, yeah. <laughs> got you. What is it? Got you, got you, got. Got you, got you, die. It's, it means we go together. So when the the United States forces oh, fly. over in Korea, and Korea, you know, they have to do something together. They're going to do it together. So that's what that means. Oh, thank you for clearing Man, that. So kids in high school, died. yeah, kids in high school should ask other kids. You know, can can we got you, got you, got? Like, can we go together? <laughs> well, That'd be I mean, fly. I mean, it would I mean, learn, learn the language. Well, thank you for your right. service. No problem. Can I give a shout hey, out? Thank you for, of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yo, shout out to the whole <sighs> do a die best style. Putting them in the hey. style. I just came from up there last week. Shout out to my homegirl, Brandy, 40th birthday. Right there on, on Notion in, in Lafayette. It was lit. But other than that, y'all just all have a great day. Everybody stay safe. All right. You too, All right, sir. King. Peace. Okay, so what's the moral of the story? I mean, the moral of the story is, and I'm going to go with what the first um, woman who called up, she said she used to be a waitress. You know, you still have to do an exceptional job. Don't let somebody who's bad in a restaurant dictate what the rest of your day is going to be like. But for y'all out there being cheap or, you know, being rude to people, make sure you leave a tip, man. People do rely on this, especially right now. So if you can afford to do it, uh, you know, make sure you treat people well and leave a tip. I agree with that. And I would say for the waiters and waitresses, just remember you're in the service industry. So to me, it's about customer service. Provide great customer service, get a great tip. Provide good customer service, get a good tip. Provide poor customer service, get a poor tip. And don't count my pockets because of who I am. If I leave you the bare minimum minimum of tips, just be appreciative. (laughs) What is the bare minimum? 20%? Um, 15 is usually like the smallest. 15? I think 18 is like average, and then 20 is a pretty decent tip, and then 25 is amazing. Okay, well, I'm going to leave my penis size, 18%.
Average. First of all, okay. The world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the gossip. Gossip. The Rumor Report. Gossip. Gossip. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's The Rumor Report. The Breakfast Club. Well, on an appearance of my next guest needs no introduction with David Letterman, Cardi B talks about why she feels a responsibility to engage with politics. Here's what she had to say. I don't really put a lot of political things in my music, but I use the f*** out of my platform. And I have used my platform even when I was a dancer. Because you might think that people are not looking, but they are. Yeah. I mean, I'm a hood chick, and I'm from the Bronx. And a lot of people relate to me and follow me because they want to see how I'm dressed. They want to see my lifestyle. So I feel like I have a responsibility to also share to them, like, hey, while you're here and you're checking my outfit and you're checking my music, check out what's going on over here. In, in this part of the world. All right. Well, Party is absolutely six, right. Mm-hmm. And it's a new six yeah, episode you gotta go with people of, are. of my next guest needs no introduction on Netflix. So the rest of the people that he interviewed are Billie Eilish, Ryan Reynolds, Kevin Durant, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and Will Smith, by the way. All right. Now let's talk about uh, Wendy Williams for a second. According to reports, she is not in agreement with the financial advisor being appointed to overlook her Wells Fargo account. I can't imagine anybody who would be in agreement with something like that happening. Now, this was after her former financial advisor, Lori Schiller, stated that Wendy is of an unsound mind and not capable of handling her own financial affairs. In an exclusive statement that the Shade Room obtained, Wendy's attorney, LaShawn Thomas, said that she does not want anyone telling her how to spend her money. Uh, she said, please be advised, Wendy is not in agreement with the appoint appointment of a financial guardian by the court. Wendy has been very clear that she does not want a financial guardian to tell her what she can and what she cannot do with her money and that she is capable of handling her own finances. So basically, if Wendy Williams doesn't leave you a good tip at a restaurant, mind your business. It's above her now. Yeah. It's out of her control. Basically. I mean, just imagine, though, you make all this money and you can't even access your own money. And now I got to pay a financial guardian, which I don't even want to allow me to access my money. It's ridiculous. Yeah. All and right. who picks that financial guardian? Who picks that advisor? Uh, if, if it's not Wendy picking it, then, you know, can you even trust them? Right. Uh, I have no, I don't know if the court appoints it or how that happens. All right. And Doja Cat has canceled her festival appearances and dropped out of her tour. And that's due to tonsil surgery. She can't sing for the foreseeable future. She did announce on Friday that she's going under the knife for routine tonsil surgery. And that's affected these upcoming performances. So y'all have some grace with her right now. She said, unfortunately, I have to have sur surgery on my tonsils ASAP. The surgery is routine, but the recovery is going to take a while due to swelling. That means I have to cancel my festival run this summer as well as the weekend tour. I feel horrible about this, but can't wait for, for this to heal and get back to making music and create an experience for y'all. Yeah, you know it's serious because no artist is stopping the money to have surgery if they don't have to. You're not going to pull out of your tour where you're getting that bread you know, to have surgery if you don't have to have the surgery. So, you know, it's serious. It looks painful, too. She tweeted that her doctor found an abscess in her left tonsil. And so she said her whole throat mm. is messed up. And she kind of described how everything happened. So prayers for her, because that's a scary thing, especially for what she does for a living, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. And. J. Cole has signed a deal. He's going to be playing in the Canadian Basketball League. So congratulations uh, to him for that. The Canadi Canadian Elite Basketball League for the upcoming season. He's playing with the Scarborough Shooting Stars. <laughs> okay. Yes. You know, he definitely has been taking his basketball thing seriously. Now he um, started training camp and the season opener is this week on May 26th. So congratulations to him. He's definitely living out his dreams and deciding what he wants to do. Remember, he played for um, the uh, Basketball Africa League. He played for the Rwanda Patriots. <laughs> so now he's doing this. And Kendrick Lamar has earned his fourth number one Billboard 200 album with Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Congratulations to him. Yes, he got 295,000 total album equivalent units in the first week. So congratulations. That's the largest week of the year for any album. He has topped Futures, I Never Liked You. That got about 222,000 total album equivalent units two weeks ago. 
I already told y'all, I'm on record. I think it's the most important hip-hop album I've ever heard, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And um, I I think those are great numbers. I saw people saying that, you know, oh, he's been gone for five years, and he only sold 286,000 records. I didn't know that you could only sell 286,000 records. And I I don't think that album's available in no other place but screaming. I don't think there's no physical copies, no vinyl, no nothing, Right. Yeah, and by the way, I mean, it's the biggest um, album first week sales of the year. So we can yeah. so far. So it's definitely not only. That's a huge deal. <laughs> so congratulations to and, Kendrick but, Lamar. And also, if that's how you're gauging uh, Kendrick Lamar's new album, if you're gauging Kendrick Lamar's new album based off record sales, you're missing the point. <laughs> Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny did 274,000 units, and that was a huge album this year, too. So, you know, congratulations to all hey of them. Hey, man. Dropping a clues bonds with Kendrick Lamar. I say it again. I think it's the most important hip hop album I've ever heard. Well done. In my and lifetime. that is your rumor report. Um, Charlamagne, you got Donkey of the Day coming up? Yes, we need uh, Alabama coach Nick Saban to come to the front of the congregation. We'd like to have a word with him this morning, please. All right, now, coming up next, it is Donkey of the Day on The Breakfast Club. WWPRFM HD1 New York. And iHeartRadio Station. Charlemagne, say the gang, Donkey of the Day. Charlemagne. You are a donkey. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I might not have the song of the day, but I got the Donkey of the Day. So if you ever feel I need to be a Donkey, <laughs> man, hit me with the heat. Uh, yeah, it's a breakfast club, bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? Well, Donkey of the Day for Monday, May 23rd, goes to Alabama coach Nick Saban. The winningest coach uh, in college football history. He's won seven national championships, okay? One with LSU, six with Alabama. So he's the bar, I'm sure, for every college football coach. And when you win that much, you know, people want to play for you. Uh, so for years, Nick Saban and Alabama have had their fair share of five-star recruits. But times are changing, okay? The reason times are changing is because of name, image, and likeness deals in NCAA college sports. Now, what is a name, image, and likeness deal? It's when the athletes can make money by permitting businesses to use their name, image, and likeness to sell a product. You ask me, uh, Uncle Charlotte, Brother Lenard, this is long overdue, and it's going to make a lot of players very wealthy, and rightfully so, okay? There's absolutely no reason for anyone to be against this because NCAA college sports, especially in basketball and football, are multi-billion dollar businesses, okay? And historically, everybody at these schools is reaping the benefits of the work these kids are putting in, okay? Except for the kids, so let these kids make money off their name, image, and likeness, okay? It's just the right thing to do. Not to mention, you know, do you understand the stress you are taking off some of these kids by allowing them to make money? Some of these kids come from conditions that aren't the best, all right? They're happy to be in college because it gets them one step closer to the pros. You know why they want to be in the pros? So they can make money to get their parents out the hood. Now, you are providing them the opportunity to do that in college, by letting them make money off their name, image, and likeness, and you'll probably even get a better performance out of them because they don't have that burden on their backs, okay? Now, now they can just go out there and play, and, you know, they're not in a rush to leave college because they're making money in college. Some of them might be more enticed to, 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 to stay. You know, I think name, image, and likeness is a win all across the board, but people like Nick Saban don't think so. In fact, Nick Saban believes paying high school players under the guise of uh, name, image, and likeness to attend a certain school is bad for college sports. Why is it bad for college sports? Well, when you have HBCUs like Jackson State University and their recruiting class is ranking ahead of several Power 5 programs and they land Travis Hunter, the number one recruit in the country, not just land him, but he decommitted from Florida State to go play for Coach Prime in Jackson State. That's what I think Nick Saban means by this is bad for the sport. But he didn't, he didn't just aim at Deion Sanders. No, he took shots at Texas A&M's Jimbo Fisher, too. He said both of these programs are paying for play. Let's listen to what Nick Saban had to say read about them. You know who they are. I mean, we were second in recruiting last year. A&M was first. A&M bought every player on their team. Made a deal for name, image, and likeness. All right, we didn't buy one player. All right, but I don't know if we're going to be able to sustain that in the future because more and more people are doing it. There are rules, just like Nate said. We have a rule right now that says you cannot use name, image, and likeness to entice a player to come to your school. 
Hell, read about it in the paper. I mean, Jackson State paid a guy a million dollars last year that was a really good Division I player to come to school. It was in the paper, and they bragged about it. Oh, I got to take a sip of water. Hold on. Mm. Mm. I am too, too dehydrated because it is way too much salt on that cracker. Okay, I mean, the sodium is high. No one man should have all that salty. My God, Nick Saban. Nick Saban sound like Nino Brown on the stand telling on everybody. He might as well have yelled out, this is bigger than Nick Saban, and I got a list to prove it, okay? Nick Saban can't fathom why any kid would want to go play at Jackson State University, all right? This is just old-school arrogance, old-school elitist, okay? In his mind, he's thinking we have better everything, better facilities, a better stadium, a better shot of our kids going to the pros. He doesn't even realize how much his sense of entitlement is ingrained in him, okay? I guarantee at certain schools he expects to always be in the running for top recruits. There's certain schools he always expects to have that level of privilege. And Jackson State is not one of them. Okay, not to mention we all know college sports is filthy when it comes to pay for play. All right, there's nothing, 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 nothing honorable about what Nick Saban did because I guarantee he also has dirt on his name too. And Deion Sanders all but told him that. Deion said, I don't even wear a watch and I know what time it is, okay? They forgot I know who's been bringing the bag and dropping it off. I know this stuff. I'm not the one you want to play with when it comes to all of this stuff. In the words of the late, great Barnwell, South Carolina legend James Brown, don't tell a lie about me and I won't tell the truth on you. And what's crazy, if Deion starts spilling the beans on other coaches and programs, if he starts talking about what he knows, they'll say he's out of line and breaking coaches' etiquette. And coaches aren't supposed to do that to each other, even though we just saw Nick Saban do it. And I see coaches like Steve Spurrier and I see SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey siding with Saban, which proves Dion right when he says Nick was just speaking for everybody when he made those comments. Let's listen. That ain't one about me. When I look through the smoke and through the fire, Coach Saban used me and used Jimbo Fisher as pawns in his plea for help from his boosters and his donors. We were just pawns. So now, he was really going at his people to, to up the ante so that he could outdo Coach Fisher. Right. Now, they just threw me in the fire because of mm. what we accomplished in uh, recruiting last year. They, they just threw us in the fire because he was the spokesman for all SEC and he was the spokesman for all the prior fives and the PWIs by saying, hey, y'all, we can't let that happen again now. Lord, have mercy. Listen, we talk about, you know, protecting people at all costs. I told y'all back in December, don't listen to anything negative you hear about Coach Prime in the media, okay? It's going to be happening as long as he's at Jackson State University. These kind of attacks are typical when you start challenging and disrupting the basic belief that the way things have been going in any industry is the correct way. Okay, for years, PW, PWIs have had advantages in every single category, and that's what always leads the best players in the country to want to go play for them. But now that you have a black athlete, okay, the number one recruit in the country saying he chose Jackson State because historically black colleges and universities have a rich history in football, and he wants to be a part of that history in that future, Ooh, scary sight for the Nick Sabans of the world because they know they can't compete with culture. You might have more money, you might have more resources, but you ain't black. And you don't have the cultural cachet Deion Sanders has. Nick Saban, you never made must be the money, damn it. Okay, you ain't never made must be the money. Hey, hey, come on now. You don't have the cultural cachet that Deion Sanders has, Nick Saban. Now, the good brother Steven Jackson from the All The Smoke podcast had some words for Nick Saban. And anything I could say, he said better. Let's listen to the good brother Steven Jackson. Hey, OG Prime, when the hate don't work, they start telling lies. That goes to show that you're applying pressure. And they threaten. Oh, yeah, they threaten. When you have a big coach like Nick Saban and come out just blatantly lie like that about a player getting a million dollars, Jackson, you are applying pressure, Dion, and they threaten. Why? We can't play for our people and make our people look good sometimes. Why we got to run to these D1s? Oh, you mad because you didn't get the best player in the country, Nick Saban. That's what you used to, huh? Yeah, it's a new day. And it is a brand new day indeed. Please let Remy Ma give Alabama coach Nick Saban the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw. 
You stupid mother you dumb. All right, well, Charlemagne, thank you for that donkey of the day. Yes, indeed. And for that beautiful song. <laughs> Must be the money, Deion Sanders. Hey, hey, hey. hey, what we got coming up, Yee? Uh, we are going to be talking about how old is old. Now, this all came from uh, Young Miami and Diddy. She had put a question on her social media and asked how old is old, and somebody wrote Diddy in the comments. So now it had me thinking. Oh, I told Lord. you I was at my... I was at my college over the weekend and I had to give this speech and I was talking about how when I was younger, I thought 21 was really, really old. Like when I was in, you know, middle school and high school, I was like, man, when I get old, when I'm 21, I'm going to be married. I'm going to own a house. I'm going to have kids. I'm going to have all these things going on. And I feel like every year, every couple of years, you realize that goalpost keeps going further and further when you think about what is old. So now <laughs> what do you think old is? <laughs> what I think old is. That's a great question. What age Let me old? think about it. We'll talk about it when we come back. The Breakfast Club. I know it, man. 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 Call me. Add your opinion to The Breakfast Club topic. Come on. 800-585-1051. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today. And today we are discussing how old is too old. Where does this come from, Yee? Now, Young Miami had wrote on Twitter. Excuse me, I'm at home. There's uh, sirens. Young Miami wrote on Twitter, what age do y'all consider old? And her comments were in shambles. After that, people were writing Diddy. Diddy is old. Sean Combs and things like that. But then it brings up the question. Amazing comeback, by the way. <laughs> do you guys consider old? I was actually talking about it this weekend, too, when I was visiting my college. It was a reunion weekend. There were people there who graduated in 52, you know, just marching in. And I was like, man, that is amazing uh, just to see that age is definitely a blessing. But what do you say is old, Charlemagne? Man, that, that's a great question. I don't know, because every time I think I know what old is, I meet someone who is at a certain age that reminds me how much more life there is to live. Like on Friday, I was coming back from uh, Hilton Head and I sat on the plane next to this 86 year old woman from Long Island who had just came back from her homegirl's crib in Hilton Head. And she had like this really big infectious laugh. And, you know, she was talking to me about how she survived cancer twice. And, you know, she's still out there living her life. Like, still out there enjoying things, you know? Like, telling me she had a trip to Turks and Caicos plan coming up soon. So it's just like, man, she's 80-something years old, and she's still living life. She walking through the airport, you know, getting her bags like everybody else. So I don't I, – I, I really don't know what old is anymore, to be honest. Well, if you had to put a number on it, what number would you put on it? Uh, Dead. Like when you when you when you've gotten to the point where you're so when you're so old that you just die of natural causes at like ninety something or a hundred and some. Even look at um uh, uh Violet Fletcher, one of the Black Wall Street survivors. She's a hundred and seven years old, and she's still out here, you know, doing interviews, you know, talking about what she experienced during the Tulsa race massacre. Like I, 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 I don't even think old is a number. Old is like a, a state of mind. When you get to that point where you feel like you can't do anything, when you get to that point where you feel like you don't have no more life left, that's what old is to me. Some of y'all old at twenty something. Mm. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. My grandfather, he, um, he lived into his nineties, and he was Sorry, always going for walks that? outside. He was, uh, you know, very talkative, always watching his shows on television, really active. And so, you know, he actually fell in the hospital and hit his head, and that's what caused him to, to pass. But um, he wow. was very lively yeah. until, you know, in his 90s. And so. That's what I feel. I feel like aging is just another word for living. So when you get to that point where you feel like you're not living anymore, or you don't have anything to live for, I think that's when you officially become old. But like I said, man, there's so many people that I'm meeting that are, that are older than me, like, I'm 43, so in my mind, I'm like, oh, man, I never thought I would see 43, but now I meet 60-something-year-olds and 80-something-year-olds that are still living, living, and just doing a lot of things for the first time. So I don't know what, I don't know what old is. 
But I will say, take care of yourself, watch your diet, make sure you exercise, do all the things that you need to do because that is what makes a huge difference, right? So I just want to mm-hmm. put that out there. There's people who I've seen that have amazing like workout regimens and they eat well and they're healthy and they look younger than some of these 20 year olds. So, you know, just putting that out there. You're but right. let's see what you guys think. 800-585-1051. Yes. Hi, I wanted to say what's old. Now, if you qualify for all those senior discounts, like in restaurants and movies <laughs> and cruises and anything like that, the 50 plus or 55 plus, you know, that is officially old. And if you are in a relationship now, with somebody, if they are more than 10 years your senior, <laughs> then that's too old. Okay, well, I want to push back on that just a little bit. This is, this, I just want to put something out there. When you're 18, you're old enough to do certain things. When you're 21, you're old enough to do certain things. Does that mean you're old? Just because you're old enough to get certain benefits or be allowed to do certain things? No, I'm talking about the the senior discounts, Charlemagne. When you go to the movies, when you're taking a trip, when you you sit down at IHOP, if you get that senior discount, free pancakes. Officially old. I ain't talking right. about like no, AA. She's talking about AARP and things like that. That's like really what yeah. it's uh, well, defined as. Well, I can't wait till I can get the IHOP senior discount, damn it. I want that 10%. <laughs> Me too, mother. Okay. I got 12 more years. 12 more years. I'll be 55 and I can get that 10% senior discount from IHOP. Okay, look, so AARP, that's the American Association of Retired Persons. That is for um, over the age of 50. Okay. I'm with that. That's a good age. 50 is a great age. Listen, I just hope that as I get older, I get better. That's all you can hope for. That's all you can hope for. And 50 right around the corner. I'll be 44 this year. 50 is right there. Well, I'm staring 50 in the face. Mm-hmm. All right. How old is too old? We're discussing it this morning on The Breakfast Club. Call us 1-800-585-1051. Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off today. And we're talking how old is old. Where is this coming from, Yee? Young Miami tweeted out, what age do y'all consider old? And so a lot of people were weighing in with their uh, answers to that. <laughs> and the answer was Diddy, is what they were telling her. No, you know what? Some people were saying 30 on, on these comments on her page. <laughs> oh, Lord. Don't, don't see, those are the 16-year-olds. When you're 16, you think 30 is so old. Not knowing that mm-hmm. 30 is right around the corner for you as well. Not really, though. You still got your 20s to go through. But, Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the phones. Let's see how old is old. Hello? What's going on? How y'all doing this morning? How old are you? Good. How you feeling? <laughs> I'm all right. You feeling old? You feeling? How old are you? <laughs> so, I'll be, be, be 38 on the 29th. Just Gemini. Yeah, you do got an old voice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm country fed. <laughs> so what do you okay. think is old? Like, what, what age oh, do you oh, consider oh, old? I, the age I, I would consider, I would consider when you start breaking into your thirties when you start talking to your body. Like you, you talking to your body at thirty? You, you talking to your knees before you get out of bed? Oh yes. See, sir. That happens for different people at different ages though. So that's not really a a, a number on it. I say thirty because you gotta think about what you did when you was younger. So that wear your body down too. It makes you feel old. But if you don't feel old boy five, then you're not old. Hey, you're making a good point because last night I was watching the game and I started having some like heart palpitations, like the kind of heart palpitations that make you, uh, that you can see through your chest. And I started yeah, thinking yeah. like, God damn, I started Googling like signs of a heart attack. And then, you know, I started thinking about being every bit of 43 and I'm like, can I get a heart attack at 43? My wife Google everything. <laughs> All right. I see, sure, so, I see some sure people. You don't have this and you don't have that. I ain't, I ain't that age. I ain't that old, baby. <laughs> Lord, have now mercy. I see in her comments, right, in your my comments, somebody said, if you're over 40, sit down. See, so, everybody world. says that till they get 40. And then when you get 40, then what? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, and by the way, we're seeing things that we've never seen before. We've never seen a Tom Brady, you know, after the age of 40, still doing what he does. Like, the world is different now. Technology is different. Resources is different. You know, you can extend that youth thing. What else we got? Who on the phone? Hello? This is Milk out of Long Island. Okay. All right. How old is old, is sir? old, do you think? Yeah. I would say 50, 50 and up for the simple fact at 50, you got to start acting your age. Stop trying to be on every set, every club, every bar. That's right. You start, you know, being more respectful with what you do and how you do it. I agree with okay, that. So Especially you when you got kids. That's when you- 
that's when you have to get respectful. Yeah, you can be respectful before then, but I'm speaking from somebody that's actually 51. So I see mm-hmm. it all the time, and I tell people that's my age, you know, stop trying to compete with these kids. You're an adult. You, you older. Right. Oh, now, I think you about, age out in the clubs once you hit 40. What about events and parties that are for older that are for older people? Like, what if there's, you know, some type of trip or lounge party or things That's like right. that for older people? Oh no, what those about that? I do. Oh, I, I travel more. I travel even more because once you get to a certain um, point where you can't do things, at least you can say that you have done, that you've seen, and don't be part of the coulda, woulda, shoulda group. Okay, so live your life now. That's right. And then when you hit when you hit fifty, sit down. No, no. Yeah, at the fifties, that's when you stop trying to compete with these kids, being with the highest fashion, the highest sneakers, every club, every concert. No, be a parent. I think that comes before fifty, sir. I'm not gonna lie. I think that comes way before fifty. But I feel what you're saying. Yeah, yeah but shoot, I'm just not trying to be in all these clubs. <laughs> too too much ratchetness going yeah, on. Th- not at all. Anybody got time for no damn club? What the hell? I look like going to a club at forty something years old, fifty. Anybody got time for that? I go to a lounge, maybe, you know. What am I talking about? I be at home. <laughs> What's the moral of the story? Um, the moral of the story is I think that, you know, the goalpost goes further and further away the older that you get. And at some point, we're all going to get older and we're all going to age because that is a blessing. So that's all you can hope for. So really, just take care of yourself. That's all I can say, man. A lot of it is going to be your diet, what you eat. As you get older, you gain weight easier and it's you know a lot more difficult to get those pounds off. And what you have been putting in your body for decades does affect you. So start now. Start taking care of yourself now. Hey, I agree. Aging is just another word for living, man. And, you know, you can't help getting older, but you don't have to get old. Okay, I just know that I want it all. I want to be here till I'm 90 plus. All right. If I clock out at 99, 100, I've lived a great life. That's what I want. I want to see it all. Now, yeah, we got rumor report coming up. Yes, let's talk about Pete Davidson. His final Saturday Night Live episode will tell you who crashed the set. All right. We'll talk about it when we come back. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club. This is the rumor report with Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Will Smith was on David Letterman's My Next Guest Needs No Introduction. They had an hour-long sit-down, and this is before the Oscars incident with Chris Rock. Well, during this sit-down, he talks about uh, being viewed as soft and why. Here's what he had to say. I hated that, I like being called soft. The origin of my style and why I pursued in that way. When I was about 12, my grandmother, she found my first rap book. And I couldn't even curse well. It was like, ass damn, Will, you the man. <laughs> and my, my grandmother found my rap book and wrote a letter in front of my book and said, uh, Dear Willard, truly intelligent people do not have to use words like these to express themselves. Please show the world that you're as smart as we think you are. Love, Gigi. Yeah. And that was the reason I never cursed in any of my my records. Mm. All right. In addition to that, he talked about trying ayahuasca. He said he did this uh, tease 14 times in the past couple of years and how it made him see himself in a way he's never seen himself. And he talked about one experience that was the most hellish psychological experience of his life. Here's what he said. So I'm drinking, I'm sitting there, and then all of a sudden it's, it's like I start seeing all of my money flying away and my house is flying away and my career is going away. And I'm like, ah, oh, oh, and I'm trying to like grab for my money and my career. My whole life is getting destroyed. So this is your fear. This is my fear. In real right? life. And I'm in there, but yeah. I'm in there. Now I'm, I'm just wanting to vomit and all of that. And I hear a voice saying, this is what the f- it is. The shaman is like, relax, relax, relax. And she tells me, sit up. She tells me, sit up. And then slowly as like, I get to the point where I settle down and the voice is still at 100%. I still hear Willow screaming and I'm totally calm even though there's hell going on in my mind. When I came out of it, I realized that anything that happens in my life, I can handle it. Hey, let's be clear. I can't wait to do ayahuasca. 
All right, they say don't do it until it's calling you and it's calling me. I can't wait to do it. But I don't have to do ayahuasca to feel what he felt. That's just anxiety and the PTSD of being broke. If you've ever grown up broke or went broke after having it, you're going to always have those feelings <laughs> that you could lose it all. That is a fact. All right, and Pete Davidson is leaving SNL. It's been 47, it's the 47th season finale of SNL. And somebody did crash the set while he was there, and that person was Eminem. Millions of people only watching to see if I bring up Kanye. <laughs> Pete, you've, you've had a weird year. Yeah, a little bit. Oh. Yeah, I just, uh, I never imagined this would be my life, you know? I mean, look at me when I started here. Like, back then, I was just like a skinny kid, and no one knew what race I was. <laughs> And like now everyone knows I'm white because I became hugely successful while barely showing up to work. <laughs> and like look at now, I'm aging like an old banana. And Colin still looks like the only Kennedy who doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Thanks. So, so are you officially leaving? Yeah, man. Lauren accidentally gifted me a sock, so I'm free. All right. Well, Eminem does show up uh, to help bid farewell to him on that episode too. Yeah, that was in that uh, forget it. about forget about Lauren parody. Forget yeah, about Lauren. And, and yeah, then popped did. up. All right. Well, I'm proud of my guy Pete though. Drop on the clues, bonds for Pete Davidson. Proud of my guy. Yes. All right, and that is your rumor report. Uh, Envy, you got the People's Choice mix coming up. Well, that's what Envy does, right? He's, <laughs> he's not here today. We know he has. We know he hasn't been here the whole show, but he will leave a mix, and I promise you, in the mix, he will be talking, and I promise you, he's going to tell you about his car show. How much you want to bet? Um, yeah, he's got a couple car shows coming up. One in Atlanta, one in Houston. I know one of them is Father's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. so the one in Houston is Father's it. Day weekend with Trader True. All right, so when we come back, uh, DJ Envy with the People's Choice mix, but the people didn't get to choose a damn thing. Okay, it's the Breakfast Club. Call us up. Let us know what you want to hear. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee, DJ Envy is off the day, and uh, we are about to be done for the day. I want to salute um, everybody in Savannah and Hilton Head, man. I was in um, Savannah and Hilton Head on Thursday night and Friday morning because I had to do the Today Show on Friday morning. Salute to Craig, Craig Melvin. Happy born day to my South Carolina brethren, Craig Melvin. And it was just a lot of love in Savannah and Hilton Head. You know, we're on the air in Savannah every morning on 94.1 The Beat. Drop on the clues bombs for 94.1 The Beat. And yeah, it's a lot of love. And thank you for every, thank you to everybody in Savannah and the Hilton Head area that's made us uh, number one on 94.1 The Beat, man. Appreciate it. Hilton Head is so beautiful. Oh my God. You ever been to Hilton Head, G? No, I don't think I have, but I will definitely check it out. I've been to Savannah and I've been to like the restaurants that are kind of on the waterfront. That's Savannah. Savannah's beautiful. Hilton Head is like literally like the airport you land and you land in the Savannah Hilton Head Airport. So Hilton Head is like 45 minutes um, from Savannah, but it's, it's literally right there. But I mean, oh, my God, it's so be It's so beautiful. And it's crazy. I grew up in Mount Corner, South Carolina, and we always went to Myrtle Beach because Myrtle Beach had Black Bike Weekend. So they always felt more welcoming of black people. And we never went to Hilton Head. And I just cannot figure out for the life of me why. But I will be going to Hilton Head uh, quite often. For the rest of my life. And I want to shout out to my college, uh, Wesleyan University. I got a Distinguished Alumni Award over the weekend. I was uh, one of the okay. recipients. And, and so shout out to everybody else who was there. By the way, one person who got an award, he was a four-time Jeopardy winner. When I watch Jeopardy, wow. I usually can get like five answers. <laughs> so, I mean, that's amazing. I, I can't even imagine how one can do that. But yes. If I won Jeopardy four times, I would present with that too. That'd be in my Twitter bio. I won Jeopardy four <laughs> times. I was I got really nervous when I had to give the speech. And um, Lynn Manuel Miranda was there, who actually, um, you know, he wrote Hamilton in the Heights and all of that. So he was there too because one of his colleagues was also getting an award at the ceremony too. But shout out to Wesleyan University, a great college. I'm glad I went there. Got a lot of lifelong friends. Um, it was amazing. I haven't been back on campus in so long, so it felt good to be there. Did Lynn go to Wesleyan too? Yes. Okay. Yes, he did. All right. All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. 
Yes, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. You got anything before we get out of here? Yeah, I just want to say, everybody, be safe out there. Y'all know I tested positive for COVID after moving around a lot this past weekend, and everybody's talking about these surges. I am vaxxed and boosted, so I'm uh, thankful for that because maybe I would be a whole lot more sick. Right now, I feel like I have a cold, a little congested, a little sore throat, um, runny nose, tired, but... I feel better already today, but I just want to tell everybody, do be safe and be careful, okay? All right. Hey, can, and can I salute uh, the amazing uh, Latham, Latham Thomas, Miss Glow Maven. Man, you know, Glow Maven. First of all, I am a witness to the power of doulas. You know, Latham has guided us to through our last two uh, pregnancies, my wife and I, and I salute her, and I was... This weekend, I was in Brooklyn at her second annual doula expo. And when I tell you that that doula expo is an incredible event, um, I sat down in conversation with my man, Charles Johnson. If you know Charles Johnson's story, then you know that his queen, Kira Johnson, tragically lost her life mm -hmm. after a routine C-section at Cedars Sinai Hospital. Kira was, you know, left to bleed internally for more than 10 hours, you know, before so they even sad. got to her. And Every time I hear that story, man, I first heard that story when I was watching CNN randomly, you know, um, some years ago. And every time I hear that story, it just it, it just really makes me shake because I had to go through that with my, my wife for our second child. She had to have an emergency C-section. So, you know, you just realize, you know, you're just thankful when those things act, act, actually, you know, go right. So salute to my man, Charles. But, man, the Doula Expo, Latham is really bringing together a community of people that need to be brought together, and it's a, it's a resource that we all need. So I hope for everybody who attended the Doula Expo, they learned something and they understand why having a doula you know, if you're looking to get pregnant or if you're pregnant now, they learn something and they understand why having a doula, you know, if you're looking to get pregnant or if you're pregnant now is, is so important. So drop on the clues bonds for Latham Thomas, man. And make yeah, sure you at that doula expo work. next year. Oh, she's the best. And you can sign up for doula and you can sign up for doula classes online, too, with Latham. So if anybody's thinking about becoming a doula, can men be doulas? I haven't seen any. That's a good question. <laughs> well, I really don't know. I'm gonna be. I, I could be wrong. I don't think men have the temperament to be doulas. You know, that's that's the reason men get doulas, especially you know when you got a, 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 a another woman in there that can talk to the doctors and nurses in a a, a very even mannered way. I always tell Latham that. I'm like, I don't know how she keeps her cool. I've never seen Latham turn up not once, but she makes sure that things get done. So I don't know if. A doula can be a man. The definition of a doula is a woman who is trained to assist another woman during childbirth. So I don't know if men can be doulas. I have no idea. Okay. Well, they said they do have male doulas. I just see an article here. We need more male doulas. So for everybody out oh, okay. there who's thinking about it, it's a great thing yeah, to do. And uh, listen, the positive note is simply this. Before God sends you into your next season, he will prepare you. He will remove and he will also add, whether it's people, things, old habits, etc., don't expect to move forward without having to leave some things behind. Everything can't go with you. Remember that on this fine Monday.